Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today I want you to join me uh, because I've got a new tool for my proceedings in here. So what it is, it's a hotel station. Now I haven't had one before, but I want to get some experience. I want to play with it and see. This here is the 858D, pretty much the cheapest model uh, you can get. They are available on eBay for about 30 to 40 pounds, so they're really inexpensive as far as hot air stations go. I'm willing to give it a go and put it through some paces. We're gonna open it and yeah, it came from China, so I guess it's important to take it apart before we switch it on, just to make sure it's electrically safe. This is how it comes in a big grey box, straight from China, manufactured by Bar Trade Company Limited. It's worth noting that this model A58D, made by Hako originally, it's now made by a large number of places, manufacturers in China. I think this is, does it say the power? I think this is a 700 watts heating element. Yes, it is, yeah, power 700 watts. So, yeah, should be plenty powerful when i said i don't have any experience with a hot air station uh, that's not exactly true a couple of times i needed to desolder something with hot air and out of necessity i used just a heat gun i've got a big uh, two kilowatt heat gun did its job when needed but the drawback with the heat gun is that it actually heats up a very large area. It's really good to remove pretty much every component off of a motherboard from a PC if that's what you want to do. Precision work, not very much. Here it is. Touch and feel is, I guess, what I expected. This is metal, so I thought it's, it was going to be plastic. The gun is here. It's not uh, detachable on this model. I thought it was uh, changeable plug thing but maybe not power switch air control the air speed or air pressure and temperature control buttons it comes with a little stand that can be mounted on either side power cord and three nozzles there's a little notch on here that uh, engages with the nozzle to make it stick on whoever was uh, doing the mold for the casing was drunk it says T-O-H in here. If you look at mirror image of this, it will actually say hot. Never mind. We all know it's gonna be hot. But yeah, let's take it apart. I've got some Phillips screws. This is bizarre. So all the three screws are just normal M3, M3 and a half, you know, tapped and they go into metal. The one in the bottom right is a self-tapper. So self-tapping screw into metal why a manufacturing sticker date 17 august 17 so not very old fairly recent model i guess transformer in the back and okay and now i'm i'm glad i opened this uh, there is a extra screw in here which if I moved it about it would could have shorted anything on the board and what then on the back actually those two screws were self tappers and those two were proper screws with a thread so yeah not sure why and there's more debris but this one is not as dangerous because it's just a cut of a zip tie yeah that's why you should open anything that has got a plug basically that came from china yeah you better open it up before you plug it in from what i see over here there is no special reason for the screws to be different because it looks like it did have a thread on both sides it's just they used whatever screws they had in a in a bucket the fuse is here the connections are soldered and a piece of heat shrink is put on it uh, but it has not been heat treated it seems it's still in its fully unshrunk state maybe they needed a hot air station there's a catch for the mains flex uh, with a piece of zip tie to prevent it from being pulled out that's okay and um, the transformer inside that's a uh, powering only the electronics here i'm screwed on to the base with a couple of screws just like the extra one that we've got in there they've put a piece of red stuff on the screws to prevent them from unscrewing that's nice i guess let's look at the control board here is more heat shrink that hasn't been properly heat shrunk it's not covering the the switch that's the main switch yeah that goes through the fuse so let's try to work out what's going on in here because I'm having my doubt. I did read on some forums that there has been a few of those reported that have been 
just wired incorrectly. Cables going out to the actual gun also go through, through a similar catch like the mains flex and there's a piece of zip tie and some hot melt glue to hold it in place, stop it from wobbling. Piece of solder on here dangling. So you see over here, there's a piece of solder. The construction is uh, not great, I must say. All the connectors are different. There won't be an issue putting it back together. The four standoffs are metal and they're connected to the front plate. I think they're welded on and there's a piece of plastic skipping it on at a distance. Front plate seems to be grounded and if I trust the colors in the flex, uh, which we can confirm by opening the plug, which by the way says unbreakable UK standards, 13 amp only. It looks like a correct plug with fully unshielded earth. I think it had a little bit of a mishap in the shipping because it's <laughs> unbreakable. Um, yeah, okay. It will do for now, but I'll probably put a new plug on the later on. It's a little bit wobbly. Here is the plug, at least it's wired correctly. From what I see, the end of flex individual strands has got a crimped on end, so that's not too bad at all. There is a fuse that says BS1362 standard, but for as far we can tell, there could be a piece of nail inside. Okay, another thing that's uh, not quite right. This screw is loose, and the other three are fine. It's worth noting that this area here is at mains voltage because where's that big connector here comes from the fuse straight from the mains i guess it will be a good idea to have a look at what's actually on the other side of the board the board is free i'm still getting used to this new setup oh no it's not free still being held by the pot which doesn't want to come off what's going on Is there a screw somewhere? No, I don't see it, so it has to come off. Oh, that was the toughest thing. Anyways, we have the board out. Here is the board in all its glory. Here is the high voltage section. Not very impressive. I mean, there is a cutout because the traces going to the display are dangerously close to the main side not ideal i mean they could have made the board a centimeter longer and make this much better everything seems soldered apart from stuff that was not meant to be soldered like some of the legs over here i think it's some sort of op amp didn't bother even putting a solder pad in where there's no connection a little trimmer pot for calibration pot for adjustment of the air speed or air pressure has got plastic rod so that's good. I mean, that's what you want to see on any anything that's got mains on it. And as I said before, the the front metal plate is grounded. Yeah, it's it's not pretty, but it it should be okay, I guess. That's what you get for your thirty or forty pounds BTA sixteen here. So this is a triac opto isolator. I think uh, they usually they are usually white MOC three zero four one. I bet it's an opto isolator look at this this is this is poor so uh, opto isolator is there to isolate between here and here yet they've put a trace in the middle between the opto isolator parts they shouldn't do that really because you know you're just decreasing the isolation gap in here but probably about four millimeters yeah, in between that trace and the high voltage side x2 capacitor on the main side a multiple bridge rectifier and the output transfer the transformer in the in the unit has got two outputs two secondaries and they go in here that's this little transistor like thing that's um lm7805 so just a 5 volt voltage regulator probably to power up the microprocessor which is driving the leds and doing the temperature stuff and, and so on but uh, in proper chinese style that's I still got out of out of view of the camera. Sorry for that, but yeah, um, absolutely no markings. Tip one two two uh, power transistor. Um, I suspect the power transistor is driving PWM for the motor. Heating element is powered from the mains. That's why the little transformer there. It's not that big. It's only got to power this circuitry. 
plus the air. Hopefully it, it works. So I'm having my doubts right now, especially the high voltage side of things. It's a little bit, yeah, look at the soldering and next to the triac, I just run a flathead screwdriver between me to make sure there's nothing there, but uh, yeah, it's uh, horribly, horribly close. What I think is happening here is the micro, depending on the temperature setting, is uh, reading out the temperature, which my guess would be comes on one of the pins here. Those two connectors are going to the blower gun, the, what you what you hold in your hand. This I would think is the blower motor. Those two, those three, sorry, would be one would be the temperature and one would be the heating element. Uh, no, it's not. So the heating element goes straight from this connector. It's, yeah, those two thinner cables, quite thin, but bear in mind though, they are carrying mains voltage on here. One of those two somewhere here, there's a temperature sensor, just switches off on the triac, and that's how it adjusts the temperature. And the triac just kicks in and sort of modulates the mains to get higher or lower power. Let's have a look at the gun. Now to take it apart the front unscrews like so and there are two self-tapping screws which I've taken out already. Here is the heating element and there are four cables going to it. Those would be the power. Does it come out? Yes it does. Braided sleeve. Uh, here it's a thermocouple at the very end, very output of the blower so that's what measures the temperature this is responsible for blowing the air so it's just a blower fan it's sucking the air from one side and only one side has got holes in the handle there is a little circuit board and this yellow cable which i suspect it's this one here so that's connected directly to the ground mind you only by the contact because it's being squeezed in in the casing against the metal it's not soldered on or crimped on you know well actually you can't solder because this gets really hot but it should have been either screwed on or something like that a little reed switch which i assume there is a magnet in here yes so there are magnets in the case on the on the two sides i've just noticed there's some hot glue so that's probably how they're holding them in inside when this goes in the reed switch will click off well there's nothing on this board it's just a just a whole bunch of connections. Have they connected everything right? God knows. Let's just maybe have a look at the mains ones. Those two connections here, are this. these are the mains ones going to the blue wires that go into the heater elements. It went back together reasonably easily. I've only paid attention to which holes were already destroyed by the self-tapping screws and put those back in the same place. I've attached the stand which is meant to hold it like so. Here goes nothing. It has got a hundred degrees under. It feels hot. That's on air one. So that's quite a bit more. If I press the button, quickly goes up to 300, 450. Oh, that is really hot now. Oh, 370, 390. It, now, what happens if I put it in the stand? Now oh, it drops temperature. So when it's in a stand. And my battery died because I unplugged the power supply to the camera to plug this in. Hashtag unprepared. The Eagle starts filming with a flat battery. Rest function works. Stick it in. The air stays on what it was or whatever is set. But the temperature drops to 100 degrees. As soon as you pick it up, it will start ramping up the temperature. This got quite warm already. Only after a short while. Today is tomorrow. And yeah, magic of video editing. I was tired and it was quite late. It was about midnight and I had to get up next day, well today, for work. What makes a good rework station or hot air station? What is the difference between a 30, 40 pound hot air station and a big name brand like JBC that costs seven, eight hundred pounds or even more? Then I thought, um, maybe this one doesn't actually perform maybe it's when you you know when you've got it on one or two or on low air if you increase the air perhaps this one does not perform so i'm going to pull out a thermocouple and get it measured the problem was all my stuff is still in boxes spent about an hour digging through found a box of multimeters it was the last box i looked in as always i've got here false rms 
meter whether it's false or not that's another story it's one of my videos that i've put up literally just before i had to pack up the lab and uh, we started moving the house there were so many comments people telling me that i was wrong and yes i was but i also wasn't that deserves a separate video now right now let's measure if this gets up to the temperature i've put the thickest nozzle onto this to maximize the airflow i mean i could remove the concentrator nozzle altogether i figured it's it will be more more appropriate the biggest one that was here that's uh, looks about 10 millimeter i'm gonna set the airflow to the highest once the air comes out of here once it's heated there is no difference between this and you know a very expensive hot air station the only variable unless i don't understand something but the only variable left as long as the temperature is right is the amount of airflow uh, what's this set to uh, let's set it to 100 degrees the lowest temperature yeah, that's set to 100 and i'll put this into the and that's uh, yeah a little bit overshoot 120 something might be a good opportunity to calibrate this by the way when you put it in the holder if the temperature is less than 100 and the display displays just three lines and it switches off which is a nice a uh, nice feature turning left decreases the temperature so we've got our reference point set it's on the highest airflow so let's go up to 200 and see what happens and that's 190 and 200 on here that's uh, that should be 300 so Two hundred seventy something. I'm now thinking I should actually calibrate this on the highest setting. That would make the most sense to get this calibrated when it's uh, set to the maximum temperature. That would give the best accuracy. Four hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's getting charred. Okay, a little bit less. So measuring the temperature at right at the exit of the nozzle, I've got four hundred and thirty, four hundred and forty. Depending how I hold it, I guess that's fine. But as you can see, it does get to temperature. Let's see. And that's on the highest airflow and with the highest nozzle. So with that adjustment, let's see what will it show at 300. 300 and 7, 10, 15. If I drop it on here now, it will try to cool it down. And once it gets to 100, it shuts down certainly does get uh, up to temperature that makes me think it's not a good idea to switch it off just rapidly uh, when it's up at temperature because it's got a program that cools it down keeps blowing the air through it until it gets to about 100 degrees so if you get one of those best to let it cool I think that's all I can do right now. Soon we will put this to the test and see actually can we actually solder and desolder some stuff with it. I just wanted to have a look and see whether this is actually safe to use. It appears that it's yeah, on your own responsibility, but as long as we are aware of that, uh, that should be fine. For today, that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more random electronic related stuff. And for the time being, take care.